Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this video on dBeaver Enterprise Edition. I'm Zach Antunes and I'm a solutions architect here at dBeaver. Now the way that I'm doing these videos is in a progressive fashion, meaning that in the previous video, I showed many of the features that are available in dBeaver Lite Edition. Each successive version of dBeaver Pro contains all the features of the version below it, meaning everything that's available in Lite is available in Enterprise, everything available in Enterprise is available in Ultimate. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the features that are available if you choose Enterprise Edition, but rest assured, everything I demonstrated in Light Edition is available in Enterprise Edition as well. And so with that being said, I'll start off by contradicting myself a little bit and returning to the projects feature, which is available in Light Edition. So you can see I've got dBeaver Enterprise Edition open here. And if you recall from my last video, Projects are a really great way to organize your workflow. So as I mentioned in the last video, you could do like an IT project and put your IT databases in there, a sales project with your sales databases in there. But what becomes very important in Enterprise Edition with projects is actually the integration with GitHub. So what you can do is you can actually sync your projects to GitHub so you don't lose your workspace and also so that you can perhaps share your workspace with a coworker, they can pull it down from GitHub uh, or any Git-based repository for that matter. So I'll show you what that looks like here. So as you can see, I've got this uh, general uh, project here. It's got some CSV files in there. I've got my scripts in there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, first of all, I would set up my Git repository. In this Git repository uh, dropdown here, I've already set it up, uh, but it's very easy to set up for the first time. So I'll let you go ahead and do that on your own. And then what I'll simply do is I will right click, go down to team, and then go to commit. And then I've got a few, I've got a few changes here. I've also got some changes I need to stage. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll click commit and push. It'll ask me for a commit message. We'll say EE demo video commit, go ahead and commit that. And then I just need to put in my username and my password. And in this case, my password that I'm putting in is actually my GitHub access token. So make sure you're using that. Log in, commit was successful. And then if I check it out on the back end, we'll be able to see this commit I did a little while ago. And then this commit I did just now. And so for example, we should see my CSV folder for the first time. And then we can see these uh, CSV files that I just put in there. So it looks great. Now, on the other end, let's say I had a teammate that I was onboarding, for example, and I wanted that teammate to be able to work with the same workspace that I'm working with. Very simple to do that. So all I need to do is go to create project from Git, as you can see here, click on that go to clone URI, and then very simply, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the URI from my GitHub repository that I want to pull from, enter that, one more time, put in my username and my password. Again, that's my user, or rather my GitHub access token. Put that in. I'm not gonna pull in the backup, let's just pull in the master. Looks good, that's where I wanna pull from. And then make sure you click once it's ready, import using existing Eclipse projects, Eclipse projects rather. Do that, finish up. And just like that, I've got my uh, project I pulled down from GitHub. Uh, looks exactly the same as what I pulled down from Git. So uh, very convenient and very easy to share with your teammates uh, if you're doing that. Now, moving on, uh, we mentioned, or rather I mentioned in the last video that dBeaver Enterprise Edition is tailored more towards your uh, developers, towards your database administrators. So as such, we give you a lot more tools for what we call database maintenance or what I call database maintenance. Now, as you can see, I've got my Postgres uh, database open here. So what I'll do is I'll jump into this properties uh, tab and this properties tab gives you a lot of opportunity just to check out some of the um, metadata that's in your database. So for example, I can check out my, these roles in here. I could create a new role. I could edit an existing role, for example, if I wanted to change around the permissions that I have, I could do that. And then I can also check out some system info here. Looks like I've got some settings I could check out. Looks like a lot of stuff that I could toy with if I wanted to. 
And then uh, you can change around uh, your storage. I've got some table spaces here and then event triggers as well. Nothing in there though. So let's check out these schemas. So I use my public schema. Let's go ahead and open that up. And then if I wanted to, I've got a few different options. So I can see I've got my tables here. Uh, if I wanted to, I could edit this table. I could create a new table if I wanted to. I could create some new views. I've already got a view in there. I could create a new view though. Uh, as I mentioned, I can create a function or I could create a stored procedure here, very easy to do. And then I could also look at the, look at the uh, like source of the table, the code source of the table. I could check out the permissions that I have in the table. Uh, and then some data types, uh, lots of uh, metadata for you to uh, leverage. Uh, in dbeaver enterprise edition now uh, in addition you might want to let's say uh, migrate a database so for example let's say i had my database here let's check out this uh, i have this customer database in here and let's say i want to move it over to let's use my sql server database so all i need to do i'm on a mac so i'm going to press command hold it down and then i'm going to click this uh, schema that i want to migrate it to I think on a Windows you'd use Shift, uh, but haven't used Windows in a little while. Uh, so I'll do Compare and Migrate. It's got my source table already selected, and then it's got my target uh, schema selected. Proceed. I'll migrate it. And then if I refresh, then I've got this customer database here for me to use. But it is empty, so all I need to do is I just need to export the data that's in here to that schema. So I'm going to select this database table here. And then for the container, I'm going to choose that schema that I picked before. Looks good. Proceed. And then I've got all of my customer data in here. Now, once you make that migration, one of the questions you might be asking or that I've at least gotten from other customers is, hey, how do I know that the data is correct, that the data is the same? What if I make some changes and I want to see the differences between these databases? So let's check out what that would look like. So what I do, I'll go ahead and just change around some of this data, change these folks' names, save that. And then it's really easy to do. All I need to do again is click command between the two databases that I want to compare do a uh, go to compare migrate data compare let's see i've got uh, those two databases selected but if you'd like you can get even more granular than that you could run a query so for example on the left hand side here i could do select all from rows 1 through 50 and then on the right side here i could do select all from rows 51 through 100 and then i'd compare the results of that but i'm just going to compare uh, the table to table right now go ahead Got the primary key picked. And then I can see the differences between the rows that got changed in that second table that I did. So a very handy for a database administrator that wants to see a difference between those two databases. Now, let's say you want to, uh, maybe you find yourself doing some of these actions a lot in dBeaver. You find yourself repeating a few actions. Well, what you can leverage in our case is, uh, let me exit out of this. Uh, what you can leverage is tasks. And so tasks are a way to basically uh, formulate any repetitive action that you're doing and reuse uh, so that you don't have to manually do that action every single time. So for example, let's say I've got this, uh, I've got this customer's table here that I wanna export. So let's say, for example, I want to export it Let's do this. I've got this customer table. Let's say I want to export it to a CSV file. Let's say I want it to go to, let's go to actually, let's go to my CSV folder. So let's do that. I can save that as a task. And then if I run that, open up the CSV file, Nope, I don't need to rename it. I just want to refresh it. 
And then I've got that CSV uh, sitting in there. So I could schedule that task if I wanted to. So I can go ahead and schedule it. Uh, so you can schedule it for any day of the week. Just make sure that your uh, computer's on. And then if I want to, I could also do like, for example, a report. So I could uh, run this run this task. And then uh, if I wanted to make sure that the task got completed, I can send a success report to my boss, to my teammates if I wanted to, or I could send a failure report just to let me know if that uh, failed. So very handy there. As well, I could do a backup. So let's say I wanted to back up, let's back up this uh, Chinook table here. So I go to tools, go to dump database. Looks good. And then I'm gonna send it to my scripts folder down here. Let's do that. And then it is going to be, actually I need to go into my general project. Refresh that. And then I did a jump, a dump rather, of my Chinook database. So what I can do then is I could go ahead, create a new database. So let's call it Chinook underscore three. Let's restore that database. Let's pull it from my scripts folder. And then I've got that database nice and restored. So yeah, a really great way to back up your stuff. And then of course, this is all gonna get backed up to GitHub if you want it to, just need to push to GitHub itself. Another tool that you saw in the last video that I did is this uh, ER diagram tool. Let me exit out of here. And so the ER diagram tool, you remember, it's a really great way to just visualize the relationships between your, uh, between your tables. Uh, but as well with the um, DB for Enterprise Edition, you do get the opportunity to edit these tables on the fly. So for example, I could change this uh, column name if I wanted to, I could change it in here. Oops, go back. So I could change this uh, column name if I wanted to. I'll just leave it the way it is. I could edit some of these uh, values around. So I could change this from a varchar to, for example, uh, a date time, a float, uh, what have you. And then if I want to, I can even create a new table. So let's say I create this new table. Uh, let's create a column, column one. And then very easily, I could go ahead and create a foreign key relationship between these tables. So that, what probably might've taken me a little while with like the SQL letter, for example, took me very little time in DB for edit mode. So very uh, convenient tool there. And then additionally, I will show you, we've got, for some of our tools, we've got a dashboard. So if you'd like to check out uh, some like your block IO, uh, your server sessions, we'll give you a little bit of data there. You can also pull in your own uh, dashboard. So for example, if you're using uh, um, uh, SolarWinds, for example, or using Grafana, you can pull in a dashboard here. Uh, you just go to settings, configuration, and then you can add your dashboard, not there. You could go to add chart, manage charts, and then here's where you could pull in a web chart very easily. And then last but not least, I'll show you the session manager. So let's say you've got this uh, database here, go to tools, go to session manager, and folks really like this because they can see all the sessions that are running on their database. They can kill it if they want to. Uh, you can see what uh, SQL scripts are running. You can see the execution plan as well. If I open this up, whoops. If I open this up a little bit, then you can see the SQL plan or the execution plan rather for that SQL script. So very, very, very handy. 
So that's not everything, but it is uh, everything that I'll show you in this video. Again, I really appreciate your time if you've taken some time to watch this video. Uh, my name is Zach Antunes. I'm a solutions architect here at dBeaver. If you'd like to get in touch with us, I'd recommend reaching out to us either at sales at dbeaver.com or support at dbeaver.com. As well, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Again, Zach Antunes, solutions architect. Thank you for watching my video.